Coming to Vaughn Radio. It's Vaughn Radio, and this is the show with no name. So hold on to your hats, because it's time for liftoff. Seven, six, six, five, five four, four, three, three two, two, two. Is there an echo? One, echo? Zero. <laughs> Welcome. Let's go. Liftoff. Liftoff. Three, All right. Come on. Yes. Get ready. Hold on to your hat. Strap on your seatbelt. Fasten your seatbelt. Yes. Hold on to your hat. Get ready for, for the ride, ride of your life. life. The show with no name. It's show with no name. On Vaughn Radio. It's a show with no name. Let's go. All aboard, folks. All aboard. Hold on to your hats and get ready to fly. Speaking of hats, I've got some dust polvo on my hat. Oh, my goodness. Wow, it's all right. We'll get through the show no matter what. A little dust on my hat is not gonna stop my fun. It's not gonna put a damper on my day. To put a damper on. Mmm, great. Starting with some great vocabulary already. To put a damper on something. Impedirlo, arruinarlo. To spoil something. You know? To put a damper. D-A-M-P-E-R. Folks, welcome to the show with no name. We've got a magical show for you today. That's right. And you know why I know it's going to be a magical show? Because you, my show with no namers, you bring the magic day in, day out. Dia. Tras. Dia. Wow, we've got a great show. I'm just taking a look at the script right now as we speak. And man, this is going to be fun. I hope you guys are ready to be challenged. I hope you're ready to play. I hope you're ready to laugh. I imagine you're ready to laugh. Some of you might not, you might even need a laugh. A lo mejor os hace falta en este momento reírte un poco. I mean, when is a laugh not good? Well, maybe even at a funeral. But even at a funeral, you know what I mean? Sometimes a laugh is exactly what you need. All right, amigos, welcome to the show with no name. So excited to be here with you for yet another two-hour English class extravaganza. And guys, now it's official. I mean, we can't get any closer we are just a week and change away from Feria del Libro, Madrid, baby. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. It's that time of year again. Spring has sprung. And that means it's time for the book fair at the Retiro Park in Madrid. It kicks off on May 26th till June 11th. Join us at Grupo Von Stand. Stand. 312-312. I'll be there with Damian Moya presenting our latest book. Yeehaw! And my amigos will be there signing their books as well. Don't miss... Julia Linares, or Jules, host of the Let's Get Random show. Dave Boys, host of The Salads. Jimena Holiday, host of Test Your English. Guy Williams, host of Western Civilization. Natasha Pasqua, host of Back to Basics. Kyle Miller from The Drive Time Show. Richard Vaughn. And many more. Meet your favorite Vaughn presenters, teachers, and authors at Feria del Libro 2023. Stand 312. Check out our website for the complete schedule. GrupoVon.com and follow us on social media for further updates. Feria del Libro 2023 with Baudan. 
at the Retiro Park in Madrid. Join us at Stand 312-312. That's right, folks, and it's going to be epic. And speaking of epic, here's some epic music. And I'm going to give you some dates. Some of your favorite Vaughn Radio presenters will be at the book fair in the coming weeks. I will be there with Damian Moya, Barrancas, a.k.a. also known as Barrancas from El Hormiguero. I'll be there with him. Are you ready? Saturday, May 27th. Saturday, June 3rd. And Sunday, June 11th. All of those are from 11 to 2. The stand is 312. And we'll be there with our new book. I really, really can't wait. I, I, I haven't even held it in my hands yet. It's This book is the shit, I think. Of course, definitely my latest book, but also my greatest. And I hope you'll agree. I'm really excited. So is Damian. Everybody over at Vaughn, too. Because... As always, these milk books, this is the third one in the series. They're a breath of fresh air, right? It's not your typical book. You know, let's practice phrasal verbs. Yeah, there are phrasal verbs in there, but it's not just about phrasal verbs. It's about having fun as you learn English and awakening that English seed that you've got planted in your head. So we'll be there again Saturday, May 27th, Saturday, June 3rd. And Sunday, June 11th, from 11 to 2 p.m., signing our new book, This Book is the Shit. Richard Vaughn will be there Saturday, May 27th, from 7 to 9 p.m., as well as other dates. The best thing you can do is follow us on social media or check our website for more information, because I know Richard's going to be there two or three times. Dave. Dave Boys will be there with Canciones con Animales en Inglés. Only one date. If you want to see Dave Boys, it's June 10th from 1030 to 1230. Then you've got Kyle Miller also in one date, an exclusive date, Sunday, June 4th from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Simena will be there for two dates. She'll be there June 3rd and June 11th. Oye, podemos practicar eh, fechas, días de la semana, right? So June 3rd and June 11th, both of those at 5 p.m., the lovely, talented Tosh Pasqua will be there only once, June 11th, from 12 to 2. Did anybody just realize we're going to be there together? So if you go June 11th from 12 to 2, I'll be there, Damian will be there, and Tosh Pasqua will be there. Also, Guy Williams, June 4th and June 11th, both from 7 to 9 p.m., and then you've got Jules Linares, who is just a wonderful addition to the Vaughn Radio crew. And even though she doesn't have a book out yet, uh, hold your horses, she may. Uh, even though she doesn't have a book out yet, the good news is she's going to be there meeting her students. You guys, her listeners, she'll be there on June 28th at 7 p.m. And isn't that exciting? I'm, I'm so, I mean, you can, you can hear it in my voice. All right, well, let's get rocking with today's Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Come on. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Yeah. That's right, amigos. That's right. We've got a pop quiz right now. And again, remember, I just told you to follow Vaughn on social media, follow Tosh, follow all of us, because we're all spending, I think, a lot of time of our own time. As I said, we don't get paid. We get paid to do radio shows. All the other stuff is extra. 
So if you want that bonus stuff, it's obviously free. You can follow us. What we ask is if you like it, like it. Like, like it because the algorithm of the night. All right. Okay. It's the algorithm of the night. The algorithm. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. I know. I know. I know. I can't help it. No, no puedo evitar. All right. Well, this is a post, a very useful post. And this post comes from Vaughn. It's chock full of business vocabulary, specifically vocabulary you'll need in meetings. And I'll remind you, there's an FYI episode on meetings, uh, two episodes. Uh, all you have to do is search wherever you listen to podcasts. You should be following FYI, but if not, you can search for FYI and then you put um, meetings. Or again, you can just search the topics and see which one sounds interesting to you. And in fact, I even have a teaser for this week's episode. But first, let me give you the pop quiz, and then I'll play the teaser for this week's episode of FYI. Remember, every week we get a different topic. This week we're going to the mountains. Can you say it? Mountains. Well, first challenge. <laughs> We've got a mountain to climb. And that's a great song. You know the song, The Greatest by Sia? Uh-oh, you know we've got a mountain to climb. Uh-oh, I've got stamina. Uh-oh, you know you got a mountain to climb. If you haven't heard that song, it's excellent. It's the greatest. No, I mean, that's the name of the song. But it is also one of the greatest songs. It's one of those songs that when you listen to it, it empowers you. Like, uh-oh, I've got stamina. Don't give up, I won't give up. I won't give up. No, no, no. Don't give up, I won't give up. I mean, what a positive message. Don't give up. No te des por vencido. I won't give up. The song, you should check it out, is Sia, The Greatest. And you can hear the expression. By the way, you'll learn a lot of expressions about mountains. We don't only look at geography and geology and, you know, the history and all the fun facts, but also we look at the English lesson. Uh, every week, there's always an English lesson that we can get from each topic, like uh, when we looked at death. Okay, one thing is talking about death and learning all that vocabulary, and another thing is knowing the five sentences you need to know if someone passes away and you go to a funeral or a wake. What? A wake? Despierto? Yeah, well, un velatorio. I know, somebody there had a sense of humor. All right, but we're not here to talk about death. We're here to talk about meetings. Vaughn posted something, and they gave us some really good vocabulary. And I'm going to give you a translation. I'm going to give you the toughest one, IMO, in my opinion. This is going to be the toughest one. But I think you guys should be able to handle it. No problemo. Do you know we say that in English? I know. It sounds horrible, but we say, no problemo. I swear to God. All right, here we go, my amigos. This is, again, from a Vaughn post. After, I'll post the link here in the live feed if you guys want to review this. It's a great lesson. And it's if you work in the corporate world or in any kind of business and you have meetings and things, this is good vocabulary to know or at least be familiar with. So here we go. Él dijo que es probable que esta tarde pongan una hora para la reunión. Okay, so it's a little bit long. Let me give it to you again. Él dijo que es probable que esta tarde pongan una hora para la reunión. And I'm sure you know this. Reunión is a false friend, right? A reunion is a family reunion, a high school reunion. In English, eso es reunir gente después de mucho tiempo. Right, pero el de reunirnos cada viernes para hablar del presupuesto, to talk about the budget, that's a different thing. And I know you guys know it, especially if you're in the corporate world, because you use this word now in Spanish. You've uh, you've stolen it, or should we say adopted it? <laughs> All right, folks, we've got a lot of people commenting over here, but let me give you a little sneak peek at this week's FYI episode on mountains all of you know I've got a special relationship with mountains, and I talk about it in the episode. I grew up in the Appalachian Mountains. Speaking of, my dad's here, and I talk about my dad and our love of mountains and everything. You know, everything nature, brooks, riachuelos, all of that stuff. In fact, the, the street I grew up on is called Westbrook. 
Why? Because there was a brook behind my house, Riachuelo. And then I used to climb this little mountain. I mean, it was a mountain, <laughs> but I used to climb it on the weekends. And uh, well, I have a, a special, uh, how did I word it in the episode? I said, mountains are near and dear to my heart. Les tengo mucho cariño. All right, so let's hear it. This is uh, the intro of this week's episode. You can download it and follow the podcast wherever you get your Vaughn podcasts. Just search for FYI for your English, and every week you got a brand spanking new topic. All right, here we go. They're often referred to as majestic, massive, and even magnificent. Peaks have always piqued our interest since inception. Who doesn't want a breathtaking bird's eye view of the earth from above? But make no mistake, these majestic massifs are where many have met their maker. Climb on! We'll take a peek at some of the most popular peaks as we demystify mountains on this week's episode of FYI. Welcome to For Your Info. English. You got it. You got it. Yeah, yeah, that's Nacho there, the English. That's our buddy Nacho from Vaughn Radio. Give it a listen. The episode just dropped about an hour ago. Hace una hora. It's available wherever. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all that jazz, my amigos. All right, well, let's go on over to our virtual classroom and see what we've got. See who's in the house presente. There's Kubla. Kubla kicking off the class saying, morning, sensational blokes. What's up, Kubla? Welcome aboard. Let's see Diego Alonso. Here he is. I know you guys missed him. I missed him here in the group. And he says, good morning, Alberto, friends and family. Greetings from Greenwood Lake, New York. In fact, my dad wrote me a week or two ago. He WhatsApped me and he goes, what's going on with the show? <laughs> and I said, I, I can't be, they haven't figured out a way to clone me yet. So for now, <laughs> but you can rest assured. Esto es muy bueno saberlo. You can rest assured that we cancel this show on a need to basis. If not, you know, rain, sleet, um, hay algo que dice the post office, neither rain nor sleet nor snow will stop us from our mission. It's, uh, now I got to look it up. Okay. So neither rain. It's the U.S. Post Office. Rain, nor sleet. Google, do your thing. Many of us have heard the postal carriers of the United States. Neither rain, nor snow, nor sleet, nor hail shall keep the postmen from their appointed rounds. That's like their motto, their slogan. So, yeah, we have the same slogan here, kind of. Oh, and rain, lluvia, snow, You'll hear about all this stuff in the mountain episode, by the way. Sleet, agua nieve, sleet, and hail, which is granizo, I believe you say. I used to say granizado. I mean, I get it. Same thing. Same idea, right? Let's take a look at who else is on board. Dad's in the house. There's Laura. Laura says, good morning, gorgeous show with no namers. To infinity and beyond, beyond, beyond. Let's go. Awesome. I applaud your attitude. There's Board to Iron Man in the house, and he says, Morning, folks. T G I F. What's up, Born to Iron Man? Great to have you on board. Vero. Vero says, Morning, beautiful show with no namers around the universe. A bit under the weather today. I guess I need some hugs. Well, you got them. Vero and get well soon. The best thing is, you know, when the weekend is near, ves, no he dicho cuando. When the weekend is near, um, it's the best time to get sick if you have to get sick, right? Because then you can get some R&R. &R, and I wish you lots of R&R, &R, rest and relaxation. I see your students are wishing you, your fellow students are wishing you the same. There's Clara. Que lo tiene clarísimo. She says, love this, Alberto. Awesome, Clara. Thank you so much for the feedback. Let's see. Eh, eh. 
Uh, Kubla says, I can see everybody's joining up with bells on. Joining up uh, to the class, you mean? Yeah, great. That's an expression we used yesterday, I believe. With bells on. Con muchas ganas. That's how we do it. All right, let's see. Laura. Laura's taking a stab at today's Inglés para reuniones. Right? This is, again, a post. In fact, I'll share it with you now. Here it is. If you guys are in the group, there you go. Remember to follow Vaughn on social media. That's the the best way to make sure that you guys never miss anything. Because this post, just one post, is chock full of content. So, Laura says, la traducción era, él dijo que es probable que esta tarde pongan una hora para la reunión. Laura says, he said they might set a time for the meeting this afternoon. You nailed it, Laura. Excellent job. Excellent job, Laura. And now they put, he said it's likely that they'll set a time for the meeting later this afternoon. It's correct, but Laura, I would say it your way. So, see, I'm, I, I, I like to cut to the chase. Ir al grano. I like to cut to the chase. Let's see, Vero. She's under the weather, but she's well enough to participate. That's great news. She says, he said they might set a time for the meeting this afternoon. Great. You guys sound native. Totally native. Kubla, he said they may set a time for the meeting this afternoon. Yes, may and might. May and might. For all intents and purposes, esto es a, por, a todos los efectos. Now, ahora, americanos se equivocan aquí. So we say, for all intensive purposes. Eso es incorrecto. Muchos americanos, si lo oyes, dicen, for all intensive purposes, let's say this is a mouse, right? <laughs> Pero no es así. <laughs> lo oyen mal, ¿ok? Pero otra vez, muchas veces un nativo no ve algo escrito tantas veces como lo oye. So this is just a, a way to show you, even native speakers, like, what? Most Americans I've heard say for all intensive purposes. I'm not talking about teachers or people in academia. I'm talking about regular Joe, right? So, it's really for all intents, intentos, intents, and purposes, right? Um, which in Spanish, ahora no me acuerdo como era, a todos los efectos, I believe. For all intents, it's a funny one. Yeah, yeah, but hey, I, I, I gotta be honest. I'm sure I was guilty of saying for all intensive purposes. <laughs> and that's a good thing we can do. Maybe we'll do that one day on the podcast on FYI. I'll do... Totally native mistakes. So mistakes that you'll hear a native speaker make. I'll give you one. I'll give you another one. A lot of native speakers, when they use the you should have or would have, guess it would have or should have, they use it incorrectly, including my mom. And it doesn't mean my mom doesn't know how to speak. Quite the contrary. But a lot of Americans, you'll hear them say, you should have came. You should have came to my party yesterday. And I get it because they're thinking came is pasado. But technically, it's not you. I mean, I don't want to be that guy. I, I never correct a native speaker, but I want you guys to know. Just so you know, oh, mira, hablo mejor que un nativo. No puede ser. <laughs> no es que hablas mejor. Es que son errores como laismos that are part of the language. And you're not going to go up, excuse me, it's actually come. La tercera columna va con should have. Don't do that. In some places, you could get shot. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I hope you won't get shot. Oh, man. Oh, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> so you should have come, Syria. Deberías haber venido. Why? Because you can't, you don't use the second column with should have. You use the third column. Man, you should have come. Another one I've heard a lot of times. You should have went. O sea, Usan la segunda porque, claro, americanos están pensando, es pasado, went, came, pero no, técnicamente aquí va con la tercera columna. So, again, I wouldn't recommend you, you correct a native speaker, 
But be aware of some of those. I, for, one of the first things I learned was, oye, cuando la gente lo diga, lo dice así, no lo digas tú así. Eso es un laísmo. You know, that's okay. No one's going to correct another Spaniard unless it's in a class. But, you know, it's good for you to know who somebody who's learning the language to know the right way to say stuff. Not to go and correct native speakers. I repeat, folks, we are off to our first commercial break. I can't believe it. Time flies when you're having fun. I hope you guys are having fun, and I hope you'll join us in the second part of today's show with no name. Stick around. Welcome back. Welcome back, amigos. It's show with no name time. We're in the second part of today's show. And we all know, we all know how fast this show flies by. In a flash. It flies by in a jiff. In a jiff. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back, amigos. Learning stuff here. We're learning to speak better than native speakers. Isn't that right? Right? That's pretty cool. All right, amigos. We've got a lot to do in this part of the show. As you guys know, we've got our Say What soundbite. We've got our spelling bee. Homophone, so much more still to go. Coming up on today's show. Also, a couple other words. Let's review some other words from that Vaughn post. Let's see what we've got over here. Some good vocabulary you need to know. To attend. To attend a meeting. It's a false friend. I can't attend the meeting. Not attend to. I can't attend the meeting and not assist, right? So another one, people say, I am the responsible of. No, I'm in charge of, okay? I'm in charge of. Think of it that way. Uh, another one, convocar, to call a meeting, to hold a meeting, no? Celebrar, I love it in Spanish. We're gonna celebrate it. We don't celebrate meetings, we hold meetings. The boss is the one who calls a meeting. So it's really easy to remember. Think about this. You call a meeting, and if you can't make it, if in the end you have some kind of, you know, uh, trouble with your schedule, well, then you call it off. So to call, to call it off. It's awesome. It makes sense. You can put it off for another day uh, to set a time. You guys already got that. To bring it forward, adelantar. Uh, and to wrap up. I use that one. If you guys listen to FYI, then you'll know that... Um, that's one that uh, I use all the time. I'm like, and before we wrap up, we're going to take a look at a quote or some fun facts because it's a very, very native one to know. So remember, what do you need to do? You need to follow me, follow Vaughn, follow all my buddies, listen to Vaughn Radio, listen to FYI, and you'll be learning English on pure momentum, inertia. All right, folks, it's time for today's Say What? <laughs> Say what? what?
Man, yesterday was tough, huh? We had a difficult say what sound bite. It was Jimmy Superfly Snooker, a guy who I've lost total respect for. As I said, I just want to remember him in the ring. <laughs> Sometimes fighters, you get that. A lot of these wrestlers or fighters, they don't know where the ropes are. They're like, wait, 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 you beat people up in the ring. Not outside of the ring. It's a job. You get paid. It's entertainment. You're a gladiator. You don't go to the supermarket and beat people up. You don't beat up your spouse, tu pareja. Right? Come on. So, anyway, today is going to be a lot easier. That's what I'm getting at. It's going to be a lot easier than yesterday's. And, um, well, I don't know if you guys will know who it is, but it's a really famous person. And uh, I think, again, I, I don't think you'll have as much difficulty as yesterday. But you know what? Let's get right into it. I'll give it to you, and then I'd love to hear what you guys heard in your own words. Grab a pen, grab a notebook, and write this down. They booked us, and they put they wanted us to get more wider exposure. Mm -hmm. So they put us on tour with, uh, not on tour, but we did a show with Toto in the middle of uh, St. Saint, Saint Charles, Louisiana. It's supposed uh -huh. to be the most dangerous place on earth. Uh -huh. All right, there you go, folks. There's your Say What soundbite for the first time. I'll give you a second just to digest it, and then I'll give it to you for a second time. All right, is everybody ready? All right, this is the second listen of today's Say What soundbite. Again, not easy, but easier than yesterday's. They booked us and they put, they wanted us to get more wider exposure. Mm -hmm. So they put us on tour with, uh, not on tour, but we did a show with Toto in the middle of uh, St. <laughs> Saint, Saint Charles, Louisiana. It's uh -huh. supposed to be the most dangerous place on earth. Uh -huh. All right, there you go, my amigos. There you go. All right, let's see what we've got over here. We've got some people commenting already. Let's see if anybody's got something to say about that say what soundbite. At least give us your opinion, even if you can't get it. But remember, give it to us in your best English. Impress me. I'm your English teacher. If you're not going to impress me with your English, what are you going to impress me with? Your cars? I'm not impressed by money, honestly. Um, all right, let's take a look over here. The first person, oh, but uh, these she's not participating, but I'll read some comments. Laura says, I might, I'm using, excuse me, I'm using might more often thanks to you. <laughs> I might be having an effect on you. I might be. I might. Great. Use it with all your might, Laura. <laughs> Con todas tus fuerzas. <laughs> okay, okay. Kubla says, a los efectos oportunos. Oh, it's not. Well, I, I, I looked it up here. It says, a todos los efectos o lo, a los efectos de. So this is wrong over here is what you're telling me? Or this is another way to say it. Since it's not really a full sentence, I don't know if you're correcting word reference, Kubla, or you're saying it's more common to say that. Here it says the one I said, a todos los efectos, sabía que me sonaba, o a los efectos de, for all intents and purposes, okay? Uh, not intensive purposes, that's the mistake. Let's see, uh, Kubla says, in Heartbreak Ridge, Mario, Mario Van Peebles says, I thought you was dead. Yeah, you'll hear that a lot. Eminem, all you have to do is listen to Eminem. Oh, he said, in rap music, it's always was. You was. But I think also they're trying to speak like that, like this uneducated speak. I mean, think of where it comes from, you know, the poverty from the ghetto. So, and I'm not trying to be racist or anything here. I'm saying usually that usage in the hip hop community is on purpose now. Because many people know it's, you know, um, uh, instead of you was, it's you. But in hip hop, you'll hear it. Again, uh, poetic license. Don't correct Eminem, please. <laughs> Don't correct Eminem, please. Uh, let's see. Laura. Laura says, I've seen Native American people. Er, hang on. Here. <laughs> hey, very interesting. So I've seen. Tienes que poner native en minúscula. Si no, estamos hablando de American Indians. <laughs> native Americans are the Mohawks, the Sioux, right? The different tribes. <laughs> Me gusta. Eh, importante saber esto, right? So I've seen, uh, I've seen native con minúscula American people write should have instead of should have. Oh, absolutely. And I've seen people put even should a uh, because you should have listened. I, I, if I say it, really fast. I don't even say of. 
I say, you should have listened, man. You should have. You could have You could have done more. Could have. So I don't even put that F in there. So a lot of Americans will either put of or a, uh, but they, what they don't realize it's apostrophe V-E. Again, it's what happens when you learn the language by listening to it and using it more than writing it, which is the right way, because you can always learn to write something. What, but first, you got to recognize it and be able to duplicate that sound, which I think you guys know very, very well. There she is, our movie queen, Chris Valrol. She says, morning, Alberto, and amazing mates. Hugs and TLC, chicken broth for Vedo. Oh, yeah. In fact, I've got some chicken broth. My wife made some chicken broth yesterday, and I know what I'm having for lunch. Oh, I love it. <laughs> There's nothing like chicken soup, you know. Oh, man. See, I'm getting hungry already. Uh, let's see. Kubla. Kubla is participating in our Say What soundbite. Let's see what Kubla has to say. He says, I heard an American band frontman explaining how they played in St. Charles, Louisiana, and it and felt a little uneasy. Excellent. Nice job. A little uneasy. I think this is inquieto, no comodo, right? Incomodo, molesto, to feel uneasy. I know you all know easy como facil, but a great word, in fact. So yes, I heard an Amer so this is a front man from an American band. Yes. Well, that's some that that brings it down to about 10,000 people it could be. <laughs> All right. Well, great stuff. Anybody else? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's move into the spelling bee in the meantime, and this way I'll give you some extra time while we're listening to the jingle and everything if you'd like to participate in our say what sound bite. But right now we're moving on to our spelling bee. <laughs> Spelling B. Spelling B. Spelling B. Spelling B. That's right, amigos. That's right. It's our spelling bee only on the show with no name. And as always, we're going to spell some words for you today. And today it's sets of words, parejas. So they're going to be separated by an ampersand. El símbolo and, el que va, no, el e, guns and roses. No, bueno, guns lo ponen con n. The, the symbol, the and symbol, which is called ampersand. So I'm not going to say space. I'm going to just say the word. I'll say ampersand, and then I'll say the next word. Just assume that you don't stick it all together, right? So in, instead of saying E space, ampersand space, I'm going to take out the spaces, and you'll know there's a space before and after the ampersand. So Bert and Ernie, Epi y Blas, okay, for example. Let me just see if there's anybody else. Oh, yeah, we've got a lot of people participating. Great job, guys. By the way, it's always great. <laughs> to see you guys participating. Because if you don't participate, I can't help you. But if you participate, I can help you. Oh, we need to tweak this. Retocar esto, mover lo otro. All right? Uh, let's see. Uh, Kubla says, my bad. I wouldn't dare correct word reference. Well, um, hey, I'm curious. Word reference. Uh, I don't trust anybody or anything 100%. So I was curious, really, if it was wrong. Or since you did, again, this is, again, the importance of full sentences. I would say it this way. Then I would know you're not correct. You see what I mean? Because now we're we're going on and on and on about, about this when it was initially correct. <laughs> okay, so let's move on, guys. Let's let's forget about word reference and um a todos los efectos for all intents and purposes. And let's uh let's continue with the show. We've got uh Leonardo says, I think it's an American singer telling how they put on a show in Lake Charles. The most dangerous place in Louisiana. Excellent job, Leo. Chris. Chris says, I heard an American man. I couldn't get the gist of it, but he mentioned St. Charles, St. Charles, Louisiana, and that they wanted wider exposure. Great ear. You did get it. Yeah. Chris, you said you didn't get the gist of it. But uh, 
I beg to differ. You you got the main idea, sure. Let's see Laura. She's always always has interesting things to say as well. She says, I heard an American man who might be a musician. There's that might again. <laughs> I caught you. Uh, yes, he's a musician. Uh, explaining during an interview how they were put on a tour in a place that is supposed to be the most dangerous place in the world, St. Charles. <laughs> Laura, spot on. Vero. I heard an American man explaining his feelings when he and his mates played in Louisiana. Excellent, excellent job, Vero. All right, all right. And I see some of you are uh, sharing book fair dates over there. So, uh, yeah, I think the best thing, though, just before we start sharing all our dates here in the group and confuse the teacher, well, when we start playing the game, confuse the teacher, I'll be at the book fair, all the dates I told you guys. I'd love to see you, uh, but if and I'd love for you guys to meet up as well. But a, a good thing to be able to do would be to start a group. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the best place is. Zoom, um, TikTok. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But it would be great to see you guys, and it would be great for you guys to be able to see each other, especially if you're going to be there on the same day. I would talk to Vero. I, I think Vero runs the show. <laughs> hey, Vero, I know you're under the weather, but you are you run the show as far as I know. All right, let's take a look at today's spelling bee. This is going to be pretty tough because well, we're looking at not six words. We're looking really at 12 words over here. This is round one. As always... Do your best. If you don't get it on the first go, you'll have a second round. The first one is D-U-K-E ampersand D-U-C-H-E-S-S. -S. The next one is B-A-R-O-N ampersand B-A-R-O-N-E-S-S. -S. The third one is C-O-U-N-T ampersand C-O-U-N-T-E-S-S. The fourth one is P-R-I-N-C-E, ampersand, P-R-I-N-C-E-S-S. -S. The fifth one is L-O-R-D, ampersand, L-A-D-Y. And the fifth one is K-I-N-G, ampersand, Q-U-E-E-N. I even took some pauses there at the end. All right? So... Let's see, folks. There's our spelling bee. We'll take a look over here, see if anybody got it on the first go. Who knows? Maybe we'll be censored again. You never know here. <laughs> we talk about some crazy things. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. I've got somebody who thinks that they have nailed it, and I have faith because I got to have faith, faith, faith. I got to have faith. I have faith that this person is going to get it. Let's take a look over here. And the first one is correct. The second one is correct. The third one is correct. The fourth one is <clears throat> incorrect. Nice effort, born to Iron Man, but you're not hired for the job. I'm sorry. You were the first one at the interview but I can't hire you. Let's see, Vero, Vero is right behind you at the job interview. The first one is correct, Vero. The second one is correct. The third one is correct. The fourth one's correct. The fifth one's correct. And... Also the sixth one. Great job, Vero. For somebody who's under the weather, you are kicking butt. <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> you are, dale todo, chica. Wow, that's excellent. You go, girl, is muy americano como, vamos, chica. <laughs> you go, girl. Excellent job. All right, all right. Born to Iron Man, not bad. Not a bad effort. But uh, again, if I'm looking for accuracy, I've got to go with our second applicant here, Vedo. Also, Kubla looks like yours is correct as well. So great job as well. All right. For all of you who are like me and, you know, 
when you're on the phone, you're like, could you just say that one more time? Could you just repeat? I just want to make sure. And a lot of times it's not because I didn't get it. I like to double check stuff. Seriously, I'm I've at the older I get, the more I double check things. The more I'm like, am I sure I have my and I'll check five times to make sure my wallet is there. La cartera. It's obsessive, even I, I would say. <laughs> All right, here we go, folks. This is round two of today's spelling me. The first one is, and again, I won't say the the spaces. Cuando oyes ampersand is evidentemente espacios, okay? The first one is D-U-K-E, ampersand, D-U-C-H-E-S-S. The second one is B-A-R-O-N, ampersand, B-A-R, O N E S S. The third one, C O U N T ampersand, C O U N T E S S. Those second and third ones have a pattern there. And the third one, and the fourth, almost all of them. The fourth one, P R I N C E ampersand, P R I N C E. ESS. Mucho ESS ahí, you know? The fifth one is L O R D ampersand L A D Y. And the last one is K I N G ampersand Q U E E N. And uh, these are all noble titles. It's nobility, the, aristoc the aristocrats of England, the aristocracy. Interesting, right? Aristocrat, aristocracy. Changes. I'm sure you know the word. It's a Latin-based word. And why are we playing Here Comes the Bride, the wedding song? Well, today, in the year 2018, according to the British Parliament in all the houses of lords in the royal family, the wedding of Prince Harry and <laughs> Meghan Merkel. Oh, good, good God. The wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Merkel. I just can't bring myself to say her name. Oh, my God. That American. Oh, God. She's a gold digger. A gold digger. Yes, yeah, somebody who is after somebody for their money or their influence. This is not my opinion. This is the royal opinion. I am speaking on behalf of the royal family. I am a spokesperson to King Charles the 79th, uh, whatever number he is right now. And yes, the wedding took place in St. George's Chapel in Windsor with an estimated global audience of 1.9 billion spectators who tuned in to watch Princess Harry and <laughs> that American bird tie the knot. And the British people, bird is como pájara, como piba. <laughs> that American bird who tied the knot. Okay, a todo el nudo. Well, that means to get married. And we all know how that story, well, it hasn't ended yet. But it's lovely. The hypocrisy of everyone, all parties involved. We don't want to be famous. So we're going to start a podcast. We're going to release a couple books. We're going to do a Netflix series, but we don't want to be famous. We don't want to be in the public eye. Oh, no, we want to protect our children. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> My God, lovely, lovely. Well, what a lovely day it is for all of us today in 2018. But I must say, as a British loyalist and a British royal, I preferred his brother's birthday uh, wedding. And what was his brother's name? Prince Harry. And what's the other one's name? Princess Philip or Johnny. John, <laughs> now you can see how much I know about the royal family. All right, well, a nice. <laughs> I'm making up names here. Es que no sé el nombre del hermano. Yo, I don't care, honestly. I don't care. Sometimes I have difficulty just, you know, remembering my friends' names over there. All right, well, excellent job to all of you who participated. So many people. There's Chris Valrol who got it as well, and Laura. 
and so many other people. Lupe, excellent job. Yeah, these are all royal titles, as I said before. And the first one is Duke and Duchess. You know, the Duchess of Sunrise. <laughs> oh, oh. La Duquesa de Alba. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind, never mind. Uh, so you've got Duke and Duchess. And you know, you can, let me explain something. I was, looking at, I was looking this up as I was preparing this. You can buy these titles on the internet. The same way I'm a minister, seriously, I'm an ordained minister. Just 35 euros, that's all it costs, you know? So Duke and Duchess, I'm giving you the male and the female counterpart. The Duke and the Duchess. Then you've got the Baron and the Baroness. The Baron, Baron, I think you say the same thing. Baron and Baroness. Then you've got the Count and the Countess. La Condesa, right? And the Count, que otra vez en Barrio Sésamo tiene sentido en inglés, right? What does the Count do? ¿Qué hace el Conde? Cuenta. Yeah, it's, just, it's perfect. That, it's the perfect name for a character. A Count who counts. Man. So count and counters. Then you've got Prince and the uh, Purple Rain. No, I'm, I'm joking. Prince and Princess. And you've got Lord and Lady. Those are the landowners. De hecho, a landlord and a landlady. Es casero, si alquilas. And then you've got, of course, the King and the Queen. All hail Prince uh, Bobby and his father, the King, King Robert Johnson. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know their names, guys. What do you want me to do? This is a parody. But right now, there is only one thing we can do. It's go to a quick commercial break. And get ready for the second half of today's show. We've got so much to do, so stick around. Hey, amigos, welcome back. Welcome back to the second half of today's show with no name. Man, we've got a lot of stuff to cover in the second half of the show. Also, a quick reminder, my amigos, right after today's show, you've got some amazing programs. Starting off with See Men a Holiday and Test Your English. After that, you've got the lunchtime show with Rob and Andy. It's like being at a bar with these two and listening to their banter, su chachara. It's perfect. It's the best way to train your ear. And you can get in on the conversation and participate. After that, you've got Tosh Pasqua with Back to Basics. But don't let the name fool you. She goes over the stuff even high levels need to know. Because think about it. Do high levels not need to know the basics? Or should they have mastered the basics? So make sure you listen to Tosh Pasqua's show. After that, you've got Jules with Let's Get Random, where you can expect the unexpected. Then your daily history lesson with Guy Williams in Western Civilization. Followed by the multifaceted, super talented, Dave Boys and his program, The Salad. And then to finish off your day, you got my buddy from Canada, Kyle Miller. Miller the Killer and his program, Drive Time. Remember, we're, we will all be at the book fair. We'll all be at the Feria del Libro. Check our website, grupovon.com for more information, and also remember another way to know what's going on in the Vaughn sphere is by following us on social media. All right, well, let's get right back into it with Homophones. Homophones, homophones. 
Phones on the show with no name. It's homophones time, cause homophones rhyme. They sound the same on the show with no name. The show with no name. On the phones on the show with no name. Cause homophones time, cause homophones rhyme. They sound the same on the show with no name. The show with no name. That's right, that's right, amigos. It's homophones only on the show with no name. And as always, this is we're going to look at words that may or may not sound the same. And I'll leave it up to you guys. You tell me if these two words sound the same. And well, good luck. Good luck with these. I think it's going to be really tough if you haven't heard the words before. So this is going to be a 50-50 kind of thing. Now, the first word is a word that means like um, assisted death. So um, I think voy a intentar pronunciarlo para que veas. A mí, yo no sé ni pronunciarlo en español. Eutanasia. Eutanasia? I'm, I'm just reading it <laughs> like, like I see it. So it's a controversial topic that uh, a lot of countries uh, have banned, other countries allow it. So it's one of those topics. It's an assisted type of suicide, right? They, another nice way to say it is physician-assisted suicide. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I don't have an opinion. I haven't been in that situation, and I hope I'm not in that situation. That's all. It's like the death penalty. You know, they're like, La pena de muerte. Are, you, are you for it or against it? I'm like... It's not a part of my life, thankfully. So I, I would rather know what's going on with taxes. Are they bringing them down or are they, you know, inflation? I want to know about that stuff. That's the real stuff I want to know about. Not, uh, you know, are they going to kill people in Texas or not? In, I'm, I'm not interested, honestly. I don't have time. My brain, there's no room in my brain for the death penalty. I don't have room for it. Not to not to talk for it or against it. I'm just not interested. It's not a topic that I want to debate with anybody. Why? Because I don't. I think it's a distraction. Honestly, <laughs> I think everybody. If if we really talked about what we want to talk about, we talk about why are my groceries so expensive? I don't care what country you're in. ¿Por qué me cuesta tanto la cesta de la compra? Why are interest rates skyrocketing? Why is there hyper? That's. I think those are the issues we should be debating, right? And looking not just debating. And I don't mean debating like F you, like, like Twitter debating. I mean debating them, like really, you know, having a dialogue, sitting down and talking about it and finding a solution for the next generation, if not for us, right? So that's, that's my view on those topics that they throw out there to keep us arguing, you know, when really we all agree on what's really important, you know? So the first word, voy a intentar decirlo correctamente, eutanasia, eutanasia. The second word is los jóvenes en Asia, o la juventud en Asia. So that's three words, right? So my question is, do those three words sound like that first word? Hmm. Eutanasia? Suena como la juventud en Asia? Hmm. I don't know. I'll ask you. Let's see if you know. If you know it, you can participate in our group over here. Now, I also have got to give you our Say What soundbite. Everybody pay attention. This is it for the third time. They booked us, and they put they wanted us to get more wider exposure. Mm -hmm. So they put us on tour with, um, not on tour, but we did a show with Toto in the middle of <laughs> uh, St. Saint, Saint Charles, Louisiana. It's supposed uh -huh. to be the most dangerous place on earth. Uh-huh. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, you know it. Hopefully somebody will get it. I, I don't, okay, I think it's easy. I think there might be a couple tough parts, maybe a couple words that might be difficult to get. The good news, you've got another listen. You're going to be able to hear it another time. So that is awesome. But wait, we've got a student over here. It looks like he doesn't need another chance. It looks like he nailed it. Please give it up for Ubla. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Now let's go on over to this, uh, these weird homophones. Today they're weird, huh? You know, reminds me of another set of words, but I'll tell you in just a moment. All right. Let's take a look. 
So born to Iron Man is the first one to participate. Born to Iron Man, those are the correct words. And he says they sound alike. They sound alike. Okay, interesting. All right, let's see uh, what her uh, what your uh, classmates have to say. Laura says the two words are mm and mm, and they sound alike. Oh, so born to Iron Man, Laura agrees with you. Let's see, Kubla, uh, the second word is wrong. So you're saying they sound alike, but the two words that you put don't. Definitely, because there's an S in there that would make it not sound the same. So you're, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you're, how. I haven't said if they sound the same or not, but that second one, um, no lleva S, okay? So anybody else? Vero says they sound alike to me. Those are the correct words. Leonardo says, I think they're homophones. All right. Chris says, I think they're homophones as well. So it's unanimous. Well, let's give it a, uh, only one way to, to do this here. Eutanasia. Mira, yo ya he aprendido a hacerlo en español, decirlo en español sin mirarlo. Youth in Asia, euthanasia. Okay, euthanasia. Say it with me, euthanasia. Euthanasia is a hot topic these days. People are debating euthanasia, okay? Euthanasia, euthanasia, right? So you see where you put the accent, euthanasia. All right, and the second one, youth in Asia. So there's a problem with youth in Asia with the youth in Asia. Do they sound the same? There's a problem with you. Si lo digo mal, no. <laughs> There's a problem with euthanasia, with the youth, la juventud, in Asia. Euthanasia, euthanasia, absolutely. <laughs> and <laughs> eso es uno de esos que when I first heard the word in school, we didn't see it written. We heard it. The teacher said, and what do you guys think of the euthanasia? Uh, what do you guys think of euthanasia? And, and sure. All my, my fellow classmates and I were like, yeah, well, let them have fun. You know, they're like us, right? Like the youth in, in the Western world, right? In el occidente. <laughs> so you can definitely come up with some funny jokes playing with those two words, right? But uh, youth in Asia. Kubla, you put an extra S. So youths in Asia, eso ya no suena igual, right? It sounds a bit different. Also, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Laura and Vero. They have gotten today's Say What soundbite as well. Excellent job. I am impressed. Impressed. Great job. Great job, everybody. And you know what? As a reward, I'm taking you to one of my favorite places. And now one of Lara's favorite places. She asked me yesterday, when are we going back to the movies, dad? And I'm like, well, honey, let me explain something. And I speak to her like she was a little adult. I'm like, when Bobby was a little kid, there were a lot of good movies coming out every week, every month, every year, you, had, you know, amazing movies. And now you're lucky if you get a decent movie every couple months. And then if you have to add that it's appropriate for children, or, so I explained all that to her and she goes, uh-huh. So when are we going to the movies? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, she loved Super Mario. She loved the experience of going to the movies. And who doesn't? Who doesn't? You know, even if you don't like the movie, having popcorn, you know, you, you usually eat a little more unhealthy than, than you normally do, which is okay because we don't go to the movies every day. So you don't fill up on licorice, licorice, uh, regaliz, licorice, licorice se escribe. Oh, another one of those. Remember I told you before with going back to the homophones, I told you I thought of another one, the euthanasia and euthanasia, right? Well, another one is planet. Did you plan it? Planeta? Planificarlo? So that's another one where two words sound like one. And you'll see a lot of those too, where a combination of words sounds like another word, right? Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's take a look at today's movie and see if you guys get it. A successful executive and womanizer finds his lifestyle choices have turned back on him 
when his new female boss turns out to be an even bigger deviant than he is. Whoa, sounds interesting. I like the premise. You recognize that word, right? Premise. I like that premise. So, a successful, vamos a pronunciar esta porque he oído success, success. Es como si uh, una K hay, suck, successful. I wish you a lot of success. I hope you're successful. Que no, que no falte esa K que oímos ahí, right? Que no falte. So a successful executive, no, eh? esa es fácil, ejecutivo, and womanizer, mujeriego. It's, a, it's also a Britney Spears song finds his lifestyle choices, lifestyle, su estilo de vida, una palabra, lifestyle, and we know the verb to choose, elegir, choose, chose, chosen, well, a choice is una elección, so está relacionado con eso, if you choose, you make a choice, so his lifestyle choices have turned back on him, le ha dado media vuelta, no, le ha escupido en la cara, think of it like that, when his new female boss, ho, ho, ho. <clears throat> now, this came out in a time too where it wasn't as common. Now, now it's quite normal to see uh, female executives all over in the biggest companies. And so he, this was, a, imagine, a womanizer. So first of all, he was probably sexist, right? And uh, now he's got to take orders from a female. So uh, interesting premise, interesting premise there. I think some of you already recognize the movie. So when his new female boss turns out to be, resulta ser muy importante saber esta, turns out to be an even bigger, aún más grande, an even bigger deviant than him. And a deviant is uh, anormal, pervertido, desviado. Deviant, pervertido, right? I think would be the equivalent there. All right, and let's take a look. We've got some winners. Give it up for the ladies. Chris Valrol and Vero. Nice job, ladies. The movie is Boomerang. That's right, Boomerang. I remember this movie when it came out. The year was 1992. I was in high school, and the movie stars Eddie Murphy, Robin Givens, and Halle Berry, so a great cast. Also, Grace Jones, uh, a wonderful cast. Boomerang is the flick. And Halle Berry, you say Halle Berry or something? It's Halle. Halle Berry was the only actress to audition for that part that she got, the part of Angela. They knew immediately when they saw her screen test, and a screen test is um, an audition that you do, but on tape. No, donde te graban. So one thing is the audition and the other thing is the screen test when they put the camera. See how you look on camera with the other person, not just how you do the lines, how you deliver the lines, right? So the screen test is more a visual test and also to see if there's a chemistry thing going on. So when they saw her screen test, they knew, they're like, that's our Angela. And they were pretty nervous about casting Robin Givens. I don't know if you guys remember Robin Givens. Controversial relationship that she had with Mike Tyson. In fact, I think he was accused of domestic abuse. She was accused of being a gold digger, which is not illegal, by the way. That's eh, assaulting someone is illegal. Being a gold digger is may well may, might not be a likable trait. It's not illegal. You're allowed to be a gold digger. We just said Meghan Merkle, right? So uh at that time she was uh, the media, the media is the worst, by the way. The mainstream, they're like, she's a gold digger. He's a, okay, everybody's, you know, everybody's got to be given a name or, you know, called something. And so she was the cold hearted gold digger. And it's interesting because that made her perfect for the part. She was the only woman who could control Marcus, the uh, Eddie Murphy character in the movie, the one who's like, oh no, now I have to answer. To a woman? Oh, my God. She's the CEO? And remember, please don't say Theo, because Theo doesn't mean anything in English. But CEO, what does it stand for? Easy. Chief Executive Officer. And so, yeah, the movie, it's a classic movie. This is also one of the few Eddie Murphy movies 
where he doesn't play every freaking character. <laughs> yeah, usually he plays every character in his movies. One of my favorite movies of his, and I think the one which established him as just a superstar, but aside from his comedy, was Coming to America. Now, you don't call it that. You don't call it Viniendo Hacia América. You call it the El Príncipe de Zamunda. Hey, we were talking about royals today. El Príncipe de Zamunda. What a, oh man, that's a great movie. <laughs> now, um, Eddie Murphy saved a lot of money on the budget there because he plays like 75 different characters, but the movie is a classic. And Eddie Murphy, I think he's as guilty as uh, of making good movies than uh, as he is of making bad movies. So he's made as many good movies where you're like, oh, excellent. Beverly Hills Cop, como lo llamáis policía, todo trapo, or something like that where he plays Axel Foley, right? Dun, 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 dun. Anybody from the 80s here? Come on, Axel Foley, man. So uh, I, I think he's like hit really high highs, altos, and hit really low lows. As far as his acting, I don't know his personal life, and I'm not interested, you know? I'm talking more about in his acting career because there was a moment back there in the 90s where he was the guy right he was the guy and uh and he was huge he was really huge and then he went more into producing and doing stuff behind the scenes but uh as far as i know he's still making movies all right let's take a look at the scene that i've chosen from the movie boomerang obviously the movie means the same thing i don't know if you change the title in spanish um, but uh, boomerang makes sense. What you do comes back to you. You know, it's, the, it's the, that idea of karma. What goes around comes around. Se puede decir de las dos formas. What comes around goes around, and what goes around comes around. La idea es igual. Es como si va por ahí, pues va a volver por el otro lado. You know, it's a circle. Is what it, it's, it's what it's saying. Vero says, super detective in Hollywood. See, my title sounded better, IMO. In my opinion, what was mine? I said, Detective Chiflado or something. I think that sounds better than Super Detective in Hollywood. Okay. All right. It's, it's very literal. <laughs> uh, my favorite is Bad Boys. Dos Policías Rebeldes. Literal much? <laughs> Why don't you just call it Bad Boys? I mean, even my grandma, God rest her soul. You know, she didn't know any English, but if I told her boy, she would say, eso es chico. Y bad, eso es malo. Okay, hasta ahí llegamos. Come on, guys. I mean, <laughs> that one didn't need to be translated, especially because the song they sing in it is bad boys, bad boys. What you going to do? What you going to do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. And the reason is because on the show Cops, that was the theme song. So everybody associated the, the bad boys as the cops. So it's got that that double meaning over there. All right, let's take a look at this scene. We're not looking at bad boys, although I love those movies. Uh, Miguel Bahia. Yeah, yeah, Michael Bay. <laughs> well, it's at least his name isn't Michael Bay Leaf. <laughs> Bay Leaf. Hoja de Bahia. Yeah, what is the word? Now I can't remember. Laurel. Laurel in Spanish. A bay leaf. <laughs> Una hoja de la Bahia. Bay leaf, we call it. Imagine that his name would be Michael Bay Leaf. Oh, man, I don't know if he would be such a a popular director. All right, so Marcus says, okay, you're auditioning for one of the commercials. You're a model or something. So he's hitting on his future boss, but he doesn't know that it's his future boss. So he goes, okay, you're auditioning for one of the commercials. Tú estás aquí para hacer un casting para uno de los anuncios. You're a model or something. And you can tell he's already being kind of flippant with her. You're a model or, or algo así, right? So his tone is more, you're a model or something, right? Like, como algo no importante. And Jacqueline says, no, no, I'm, I'm not a model. I'm going to work for the company. You know, as a matter of fact, you know, <laughs> de hecho, I'm going to work for the company. And Marcus says, really? Like, I didn't know about this. So first things first, he's already like, I'm out of the loop. Yo no me enterado de nada aquí, right? I'm out of the loop. Good, good vocabulary. And Jacqueline says, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Como, she didn't, she didn't rustle her feathers. No se muto. She's like, mm-hmm, marketing rep. Uh, excuse me, marketing. Yep, not rep, representante. She says, yep. Como, again, she's not even phased. Desconcertada, cero. Mm-hmm, marketing. Yep. 
And Marcus goes, really? Now he's, he feels challenged here. That's my department. I'm Marcus Graham. I said, I said, mira, yo, tú sabes quién soy yo. And she says, you're Marcus Graham? Tú eres Marcus Graham? You're the Marcus Graham? El mismísimo, no? The, si ponemos el the, ahí es como decir, the one and only, the Marcus Graham, ese mismo. And he nods affirmatively. To nod is sentar la cabeza, right? And he nods affirmatively. And Jacqueline says, <laughs> this is pretty funny that we're meeting like this. No, le está tirando los tejos. He's hitting on her. This is pretty funny that, uh, that we're meeting like this. And um, then Marcus points to her, le señala, unsure of who she is. Mm, so you are, like he's still clueless. No se entera, no, no tiene ni la más remota. He's clueless. And Jacqueline says, oh, I'm sorry. I'm Jacqueline Breuer. Yo soy Jacqueline Breuer. And Marcus says, shaking hands with her, okay, to shake hands is dar la mano. Shake, shook, shaken. Acuérdate, si tienes que ponerlo en pasado. We shook hands. Nos dimos la mano. So shaking hands, and they say, okay, Marcus says. And Jacqueline says, I'm a huge fan of your work. Huge, enorme. Say the word with me. I'm a huge fan of your work. And he thanks her. And Jacqueline says, you're very, very talented. It is, tienes muchísimo, muchísimo talento. And now she's kind of, she's buttering him up because she's, she's got him like putty in her hands, we say. Putty es como esto de que usan los niños para jugar como plastilina. Like putty in her hands. Le está, está haciendo ella lo que quiere, right? Because she has him believing that she loves him and she's a, but she's really just like, I'm going to be your boss, by the way. Okay, I'm replacing you. And um, then Jacqueline says, you're very, very talented. And Marcus says, y lo leo contextualmente del guion. Oh, see, you was treating me. No, you were. O sea, como acabamos de decir, you was treating me like my name was Stanley. It was Stanley. Me estabas tratando como si me llamara Stanley. Nombre cualquiera, ¿no? Down in the lobby. Cuando estábamos en el recibidor, en la entrada. Down in the lobby. Turns out you're a fan of my work. Y hemos visto varias veces hoy el, it turns out, right? We use, we use it quite often. And you know what? It turns out we've got to go to a quick commercial break. Oh, my God. I almost missed it. Well, that's what happens. You get distracted. You're in the moment. You're having fun. You're learning English. And it's a good thing we've got more to go. We'll be right back, folks, with the fourth. And final part of today's show with no name. We've got so much to do, and I sure hope you'll join us. So, stick around. Hey, amigos, welcome back. Welcome back to the show with no name on Vaughn Radio. All aboard, all aboard. Can't believe we're in the fourth and final part of the show. Don't forget, you got a lot of great programs all afternoon. Also, you got a brand spanking new episode of For Your English. It's on mountains. Montañas. 
I think you guys are going to love the episode. And remember, if you're a part of my community, you have access to two episodes. That's right. Two episodes. I can't tell you what we've got coming up next. But I can tell you on May 21st, stay tuned, I'm dropping another bonus episode. And I think it's one you're all going to want to listen to. It's one on time, where we take a look at some of the most common expressions that have to do with time. If you're patient, you'll get the bonus episodes. You just got to wait. Sometimes a year, sometimes more. Hey, or you can join my community. Again, you can find all the information on social media. I'm not going to bore you. No vengo aquí a aburrirte. I came here to entertain you and to educate you, at least in English. And folks, if you're entertained, if you're learning, then we are good to go. Estamos listos. Estamos en camino. We are good to go. We looked at that expression yesterday. All right, folks, it's time for double, double trouble. Double trouble, baby. Yeah, you know what time it is. Give it up. Double, double trouble. I said double. Double trouble, double, double trouble. I said double, double trouble. That's right, amigos. It's double trouble only on the show with no name. And as you know, double trouble is the section of the show where we obviously challenge you. Now, here you'll get a lot of idiomatic expressions as well. Why? Well, quite simply, a lot of times I get an idea for a double trouble when I hear an idiomatic expression. I'm like, you know, uh, shoot for the stars. No, digo, ooh, si, hay, si puedo usar la palabra disparar o estrella de otra forma, tengo me double trouble. So I'm always coming up with double troubles. I know you guys are as well. And by the way, you do a great job every day, but I feel like you guys, you had some English breakfast tea. Maybe it's uh, because you were celebrating the anniversary of Princess Pickles or, or whatever their names are, Princess Peaches. <laughs> you see how much respect I have for the British throne. Well, British throne, you know they're German, right? Okay, just want to make sure. And if not, you can go back and see when they changed their name from... Uh, Saxburg, Gotha or something to Windsor because it just sounded more English. No one wanted to think we come from the Germans. No, especially at that time, right? So, but the facts are the facts. <laughs> That's a way to, uh, when I'm, you know, arguing with my British friends who are monarchists and I don't care. Honestly, again, these are not issues. It's more as a joke, you know. I always say that stuff. I'm like, oh, you're king. Really nice guy. Sausage fingers. Everybody loves him. <laughs> hey, see, I don't know his name, but I know his nickname, Sausage Fingers. All right, here we go, folks. Here's your double trouble. Vamos a poner a caldo a nuestro amigo mientras tostamos nubes. Nubes, el caramelo. Okay. Ahora, en Estados Unidos no son rosas, son blancas. You know the ones I'm talking about. Has, has anybody ever seen, well, I hope you've seen Ghostbusters. If you're seeing things in your neighborhood, who, al final sale el, es, ese nube, that kind of nube, not cloud, okay? So vamos a poner a caldo, que también significa celebrar, ¿no? Honrarle. Poner, honrarle, vamos a poner, honrarle poniéndole a caldo de forma graciosa. Okay? <laughs> so uh, I think you use this word in Spanish as well. So vamos a poner a caldo y... Y honrar a nuestro amigo mientras tostamos nubes. Tostemos? Mm, ¿Ves? <laughs> There's that subjunctive again. Damn it! Gets me every time. And I'll give you a clue. The expression is very similar. So if you say poner a alguien a caldo, in English, it's kind of, if you think about it, 
the idea is the same. Oh, and by the way, I plucked this, this double trouble right out of the upcoming book. So this explanation that you're going to hear right now, you'll hear in the upcoming book, this book is the shit, which as I said, I hope you'll join us at the book fair. We'll be there signing it. And uh, I'm also going to Barcelona. I'll keep you guys posted uh, when I know the dates for Barcelona. I'll be there for one evening at a bookshop and I'll give you, uh, I'll give you all that information. But first we've got the book fair before we have any other uh, launches or anything. So the official launch is at the book fair, but then I'll have, we'll be going to Barcelona and we'll do something here in Madrid as well. So vamos a poner a caldo barra honrar a nuestro amigo. Mientras tostamos, tuestamos, tostemos, ¿sí? Y luego os quejáis del inglés, nubes. Otra vez, nubes siendo los caramelos esos. Anybody getting hungry right now? <laughs> oh, and you need to have those nubes if you want to make my favorite treat ever, Rice Krispie treats. Oh, my God. God. So you get Rice Krispies and you melt those things. And uh, man, you make these little bars of Rice Krispies and the glue, the pegamento, is melted that. It's my favorite thing in the world. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Rice Krispie treats. All right. Let me give you guys the say what sound bite. A few people have gotten it, but nobody's gotten the double trouble yet. Woo! <laughs> They booked us, and they put. They wanted us to get more wider exposure, mm -hmm. so they put us on tour with, uh, not on tour, but we did a show with Toto in the middle of uh, Saint Saint Charles, Louisiana. It's supposed uh -huh. to be the most dangerous place on earth. Uh -huh. All right, there you go, folks, and we'll look at who it is, what's being said, and all that in just a moment. And let's see, we've got Leo taking a stab at our double trouble over here, and Leo says we're going to toast our friend. Interesting. I have a different word, but so far it's correct. No tanto poner a caldo, pero lo de celebrarle, hacerle un brindis, honrarle, that, that works. Vamos a ver, a ver cómo que seguimos aquí. We're going to toast our friend while we toast marshmallows. I'm going to give it to you. But there's one word. In fact, Leo, one letter, just one letter in two different instances. I would change. So it's correct. It's right. But it would be just a little bit more right con el poner a parir, poner a caldo part, um, the, the, the word I'm looking for. But th that's excellent. To toast. Okay, guys. You know, I said un brindis. And to toast some marshmallows. Aunque se escribe marshmallow, es, es marshmallow. Creo que hay un artista que se llama marshmallow. Y lo escribe mellow. All right, so anybody, Leo, what if you change those T's to R's? Then we got it. We got it over there. And I know I've seen these. I've seen in Spanish people use this word like this. Okay? All right, well, if we change the word toast to roast, now it means both things. So to roast somebody is to celebrate them, but also to celebrate them by make, telling jokes about them and things like that. So it's just a little more specific, right? So a roast, como lo habéis visto, es muy popular with comedians. When somebody, when they want to honor a certain comedian, they'll do a roast where everybody goes together. They roast meat, de hecho, uh, normalmente en, la, en la, el menú de la noche, they have, you know, some roast beef or some roast, and they will roast somebody. And if you think about the word roast, to roast is to put in the oven. And what happens when you roast something? All the juices come out. The gravy, right? ¿Y qué es eso? ¿El caldo? ¿Poner a caldo? Roast? I mean, Damian and I, when we came across it, we're like, wait a second. Same thing. Just a different way to say it. But you're saying, le han puesto a caldo. Le han puesto con el esto a cocinar, ¿no? A hacer el, a que el jugo salga. And if you roast something in the oven, what do you get? The caldo. You get the gravy, the juice from the meat. So it's the same word. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So we're going to roast our friend as we roast some marshmallows. And that's one of the, I almost feel like people talk about it. it's as American as apple pie. It's as American as baseball. But 
there's nothing more American than sitting around a, um, a campfire. And dad, are you with me? We did this with the youth group at the church, not the youth in Asia, <laughs> the youth in, in Northern New Jersey <laughs> or in New York, wherever we were. Uh, but yeah, we were roasting marshmallows and that, I mean, what a great thing because it's not just about roasting the marshmallows. It's about telling stories and sharing, right? At night, we used to tell scary stories, right? And it was a lot of fun. And it's an art form. Don't think roasting marshmallows is easy. Have you ever tried it? I know people do it with a lighter, but you're, it tastes like gas. You don't, you don't want to... Uh, my niece and nephew are like, can you burn this for them? I'm like, okay. Well, it's very delicate because in one second, that marshmallow can go up in flames and be like charred and black. In one second, it catches fire really easily. So really the trick is to have it near the fire and you gotta spin it, you gotta roast it like on a spit. Un espeto, you say the same thing, you gotta roast it, right? Um, so interesting, interesting thing that we do there. And you don't know how many times, you know, I put it, when I was younger, I put it in the fire and it just melted right off the end of the stick. Oh, and that's an important thing too. You got to go look for the right stick because if your stick is too short, you're going to burn your, your hands. It's a, it's a real fire. It's not fake, right? <laughs> so you don't want to play around. So you want to look for a stick that's the length because usually you sit around it. So there are rocks or benches. There's usually a hole where they make the fire, the campfire. And you want to be able to reach it from where you're sitting. So you need the right size twig. Twig is a small stick. And uh, it's got to have a point on the end. Some people sharpen it. And you can put your marshmallows over there as you're telling stories. And uh, man, I'm getting some nostalgia right here. All right. So we're going to roast our friend as we roast some marshmallows. You'll find out that roast thing. In fact, there's a, a, a chapter in the new book. Uh, this book is the shit on cooking in the kitchen. So we're going to learn English from food products, uh, brands, anything that has to do with food. And we'll learn the ins and outs, los pormenores, all while having some fun. And of course, having a laugh. And speaking of a laugh, I think it's time for your joking. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. What did the guy say when he walked into the bar? Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. You get it? Ouch! He walked into the bar. <laughs> um, you're joking. <laughs> that's right, that's right, amigos. You're joking. The section of the show where we look at some jokes and I see if you guys get these jokes. And as Leo just said, Leo, Leo, I said it in English, uh, all of you are doing a great job today. Honestly. Excellent. Excellent. All right, uh, so here we go with some awesome jokes. What do you call a royal cow? Remember, we were talking before about the royal family. Yes, you know I love my royalty and, well, my titles. I love to have a title myself. I am the Duke of Alonso. Of all the Alonzos, I shall reign over my kingdom. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. But I wouldn't mind being called Duke Alonso. That yeah, sounds pretty good, right? <laughs> all right, no, seriously now. Well, no, not seriously. It's the joke section. We're not going to get serious at all. Here's the joke. What do you call a royal cow? What do you call a royal cow? Easy. Sirloin. Sirloin? <laughs> Huh. Okay. No, sir loin. <laughs> Did anybody get it? Any meat eaters? Any carnivores in the house? Sirloin? A sirloin steak? Okay. Sirloin, una palabra, S I R L O I N, is solomillo o lomo. Sirloin. I like a nice sirloin steak. But also, sir loin, 
el señor loin, y loin significa algo también, lomo, right? Lumbares, entrañas, right? A part of the body, the lumbares, the lomo, if it's a meat cut. Okay, so, so sir, lumba, sir loin, sir loin, el señor, el don. <laughs> hey, it's good to know if you're a meat eater and you're going to the United States and you see it on the menu, you see sirloin steak but also remember we like the french word filet mignon <laughs> all right my amigos what's the difference 10 euros no i'm joking <laughs> who is the heaviest member of the british royal family who is the heaviest member of the british royal family well, obviously it's william the prince of wales <laughs> no the prince of wales <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nobody got it. The Prince of Wales, Gales, right? And Wales, uh, Ballenas. I think you guys know that one. Well, I hope you're having a whale of a time. Eso es una forma de decir, espero que lo estéis pasando genial. The Prince of, el más pesado, the Prince of Wales. <laughs> well, Trump called him that once on Twitter. Uh, not him, his father, Charlie, o como se llama, Chuck. Johnny, Johnny se llama, uh, the, the king of England now, John. So he said to Kevin, his father, again, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know his name and I don't care. And uh, Trump said, I had a really good meeting with the Prince of Wales. El príncipe de las ballenas. Ahora, si quitamos esa H, es el país, Wales. <laughs> okay. And somebody who's from Wales is Welsh. All right, one more. I've got another one for you since you're loving these jokes so much. What did one royal family say to the other before getting into a fight? Okay. What did one royal family say to the other before getting into a fight? Put up your dukes. <laughs> <laughs> no. We looked at the word duke before, duque, right? Put up your dukes. What does that mean? Levanta tus duques? Que suban tus duques? Put up your dukes. Also, put up your dukes means levanta los puños. Vamos a pelear. Put up, you'll see it in a lot of old school movies. Put up your dukes. I think it's in The Wizard of Oz. Lo hablamos el otro día. When the, the cowardly lion, one of his lines is, put up your dukes, put up your dukes. It means, come on, vamos a pelear. Saca esos puños. Put up your dukes. So what did one royal family say to the other before getting into a fight? Put up your dukes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we've got to move on. We've got so much to do. So let's party. It's time for Famous Birthday Trivia. Right, that's right, amigos. Here's your famous birthdays. We've got to fly because we're almost out of time. The first person was born in 1948, a Jamaican American singer songwriter. Her last name means tener el mono, no? Um, and I'll give it to you in context once we say who she is. She's a model, um, actress, singer. She was also uh, in Conan the Destroyer. She was in James Bond's A View to a Kill, and also in the movie Boomerang with Eddie Murphy, which was today's name that movie. Number two, I said this artist's name before. Now, the guy's real name is Christopher Comstock, but I said, es algo que ponemos sobre las, uh, los fuegos, right? Las nubes? Well, this This uh, singer's name is Nube, okay? Y, se, y lo escriben como se pronuncia, porque no es mallow, it's mellow. Que la palabra seca es mellow, es tranquilo. How was your weekend? It was quite mellow. I gave you half of it, and I gave you his real name. Really cool songs. Um, 
let's see, silence, wolves, friends, happier. I'm sure, again, by the title, you might be like, I don't know if I know that one. But at the moment you hear one of his songs, you'll know who it is. And last but not least, this guy said, hey, ho, let's go. Oi, oh, let's go. We're driving in the backseat. We're going to it. I mean, the founder of punk, like the leading man of the 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 founders, the the godfathers of punk, a group from New York City, from Forest Hill, Queens. And this guy was the lead singer. And it's not the Sex Pistols. Uh, let's clear something up here. Okay, all royalty aside here, Sex Pistols were doing it, but these guys were doing it before. So these were the first ones that kind of defined what punk sounded like and looked like. And everybody from Green Day to everybody who's famous now will say that their influence is these guys and the Sex Pistols. Obviously, they're two different styles, similar, you know, similar idea, but obviously the British sound, the British invasion versus the American. The American came first. Sorry, Royals. Sorry. Let's see. We've got a winner over here. Please give it up for Chris Valrol. <laughs> Also, Vero. Number one, Grace Jones. Number two, Marshmallow. And number three, Joey Ramone. You say Los Ramones, we say the Ramones. This is Joey Ramone talking about a, a time when they were touring in Bumblefuck in Medio de la Nada. And he says, they booked us. Okay, to book is uh, para un concierto. And they wanted us to get more wider exposure, estar expuestos a más gente, más amplio. So they put us on tour with, well, not on tour, but we did a show with Toto, que es un grupo, Africa, great song, in the middle of St. Charles, Louisiana. It's supposed to be the most dangerous place on earth. A lot of you got it today, so great job. Here he is, birthday boy, Joey Ramon. They booked us and they put, they wanted us to get more wider exposure. Mm -hmm. So they put us on tour with, uh, not on tour, but we did a show with Toto in the middle of uh, St. Saint, Saint Charles, Louisiana. It's supposed uh -huh. to be the most dangerous place on earth. Uh -huh. All right. And that's Conan O'Brien. If you don't recognize that other voice, I know just from the laugh, Conan O'Brien. Folks, it's time for Name That Lyric. Hi. Hello, Alberto. I think the song is... No? Sorry. Bye. That's right, that's right, amigos. It's name that lyric only on the show with no name. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing the magic. You guys, you, you, that's right, you are the secret ingredient here to make this show work. You are the ones who bring that magic day in, day out. Thank you. Wonderful job. And I'm going to dedicate this song to you guys. It's Marshmallow Happier. Look up the lyrics and we can sing it together. Let's take a look. Lately, I've been, I've been thinking. Great. We're, we're practicing the present perfect continuous. Lately, ultimamente. Lately, I've been, I've been thinking. I want you to be happier. I want, quiero que estés más contento. So I wish that to all of you guys. I wish you complete and total happiness, bliss, whether it's just a minute or whether it's the rest of your life. I wish you the best, my amigos. And thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. This is one of those songs that just is positive. We were talking about songs that are positive and, you know, somebody wanting somebody to be happier. That's my kind of song. I like it. So if you're having a bad day, don't worry, cheer up, because I want you to be happier. I want you to be happier. Lately, I've been, I've been thinking. I want you to be happier. I want you to be happier.